Texas Cali brisket challenge? Can you really have a brisket challenge without the East Coast? I mean, I don't think so. that subscribe button the ring that bell and also leave me a comment down below this is a 15 pound brisket from uh, crowdcow.com and I still got those $25 off coupons in the description check those out now look I did pay for this with my own money okay so this is not a, a sponsored a video look what we're doing here like I said and this goes uh, to that uh, Hashtag a brisket a challenge. This is a uh, Texas versus Cali versus East Coast. Why not? Gotta be brisket challenge, right? All in good fun, of course. And what we're gonna do here is just a, uh, well, just a backyard uh, cleaning up of this uh, brisket. No big deal. You could see a uh, couple slices that the uh, packing plant put in this sucker. Again, no big deal. What we're gonna do is just clean up the, uh, well, just always kind of clean up the outside, right? You want to kind of square off the uh, brisket. Anything brown, iodized, it doesn't look right, just to take it off, silver skin, get as much off as you want. You could spend five minutes cleaning this, or you could spend a half hour cleaning it. In the end, it's a backyard cook, and it's gonna probably come out the same, right? So. Uh, just take your time and whatever doesn't look right to take off. Now look, on this flip side right here, we want to try to leave a quarter inch of fat to kind of protect the meat and give it flavor, right? So we don't want to take too much off. So uh, what I'm going to do again is just kind of clean up the sides, take a little bit of that uh, hard fat off. That's not going to uh, render down. That'll do us no good. And we're just going to do the best we can do. There's a little hard fat in there. I don't like that, so I'm going to get rid of it. And like I said, this is a, a very, very friendly throwdown. You follow that hashtag brisket challenge to see all the uh, Texas and uh, West Coast videos and uh, Oh, look, whoever else threw their hat in the ring, right? I'm the uh, East Coast, I'm New Jersey, and I uh, feel we need to be, uh, yeah. well, we need to be in there, right? And out of that 15 pounds, I took off about, uh, uh, maybe close to two pounds of a fat and that looks pretty pretty good to me oh yeah all right now look i always like my uh, briskets to be the star of the show right so i'm just going to do a, a 50 50 kosher salt and 50 a 50 a black pepper right i use a uh, 16 mesh i do have a link down below for this black pepper it's good stuff and you buy it in the bags worth right so you always have it it's a nice of course of black pepper 50 50 shake it up and get it on the brisket right Now look, I always dig these uh, overnight cooks and basically what I'm gonna do just to uh, give you the rundown as I uh, put my uh, rub on is I'm gonna start this about 9 p.m. at night and we're gonna go 200 Fahrenheit in the pit and I'm gonna use post oak wood and you'll see all that in a little while. I'm looking at probably the, the usual 12, 13 hour cook, whatever. I'll let this sucker run straight from 9 p.m. to 4 o'clock in the morning when I, that's usually the time I get up. And now you see where the, uh, where it's a little cut there from the uh, butcher from the packing plant. You want to make sure you don't fill that up with a uh, salt and pepper, right? You'll get a, a bad tasting pocket in there. So uh, 
If you get one of these as slices in your brisket, no big deal. Just uh, deal with it and don't, uh, like I said, don't fill it up with a bunch of rub. And you wanna make sure, obviously, you get all those asides, of course. do now is I'm going to get this a rub on. I'm going to let this sit in the refrigerator for about uh, maybe two to three hours. Get my uh, post oak in. Get some uh, Kingsford in, right? So I'm going a uh, half of a Weber chimney of uh, Kingsford. Then I'm going a couple chunks of post oak. Then I'm going some more. Maybe a full Weber a chimney of uh, Kingsford, then I'm going to go some more post oak, right? I know this is going to run all night, so I want to get a lot of a smoke flavor. And I'll also put a couple chunks down in the uh, ash bin, of course. And look, forget those fire starters that you're paying money. A couple paper towels, put some oil on it, no big deal. Stuff them in, light them up, and you are good to go. And it costs you nothing. Look, I am running a, a couple mods. I am running a, a heat assembly protector right there. I got some of this down in my uh, info on this in my uh, Facebook group and also a, a water pan. I'm uh, real excited about both of these on this cook, but especially that uh, water pan. Again, I have a, a Facebook group down below. I'll leave uh, links in the uh, description, free to join, and you'll get uh, all the info on master build that you uh, need. We're about 4,000 members strong. And of course, on any long cooks, I do a middle a shelf, and this one's gonna be no difference. And like I said, we're gonna run this sucker at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Had a little rain, so I have to cover the, uh, cover the pit up, but we look uh, good to go for the rest of the night. You want to open that hood and get rid of all that uh, that dark, thick uh, smoke, right? You want that smoke to run clear, smoke to run a little blue, and that's uh, that's pretty much what we got there. We're losing light, so let's get this bad boy on. I got some probes in. I'll be monitoring this uh, on my nightstand. You see, I got some alarms set at uh, 257 pit temperature and 153 on the meat. I don't want neither one of those to go uh, above that. So I got alarms set that would uh, wake me up immediately. Guys, and uh, look just like that. It's 4 a.m. The sucker ran from 9 to 4 untouched. And I can tell you she looks pretty good. Let's see where we're at. Unfortunately, you can't read it, but I am definitely in the stall. I woke up at approximately uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. She was at 157. And also 4, she was only at about 1 at 61, right? So we know we're in the stall, so we know we're... Uh, Good to go. Oh man. So look, so far we are seven hours in at 200 Fahrenheit. You've seen the moisture coming off that meat. We pulled it at about 161 Fahrenheit. And now what we're gonna do is get this uh, wrapped up with some uh, peach or butcher paper. We're also going to raise the uh, pit temp to 250 degrees of Fahrenheit. And then we're going to blow through the uh, stall and take her right up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, at that point, what you want to do when you hit that magic number, you want to make sure she probes like butter. Now look, one pro tip here. Remember where you pulled your uh, thermometer out? I know I was 161 Fahrenheit, so when I put the uh, thermometer back in, I want to be about that 161 Fahrenheit, right? 
That way we know we're in a good spot. We know we're not too high on the meat, too low on the meat. We're perfect and we are good to go. Oh yeah, you can see daylight is up. You can see the pit is screaming along at 250 and our uh, temperature is 196 Fahrenheit and it's about nine o'clock in the morning. So we're about 12 hours in. And you can see she's probing like butter 206, but really the, uh, the butter is more important than the uh, temperature at this point. You know, that probe that's in the meat the whole time, that's basically just a guide for you. You always want to get that butter. We're going to get this off. Look at that moisture coming out, man. Oh, yeah. Oh. Let's get this off. We're gonna get this in the, uh, I'm gonna put this one in the stove for about two hours wrapped in a uh, nice uh, blanket. Put back in the tin, put in the stove, two hours. And then we'll slice this bad boy up. Boy, look, and uh, Thanks for coming along on this one. I believe we are going to take it in live. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. It's Jersey in the house, and you'll get notified on all of my uh, future uploads, of course. Enjoy. All right, everybody. As much as I would, uh, as much as I would like to do this alive, you can hear it's like a World War III and lawnmowers happening all around me, of course. And the uh, brisket reveal is always, uh, it's probably one of the most exciting, exciting times in a uh, barbecue, wouldn't you say? That time when you uh, unwrap the brisket. You see it's got that uh, classic, classic jingle, right? All right, look, what I'm going to do here, this is always the uh, big reveal. I'm going to go... Uh, I'm gonna go right down the center. Oh yeah. I mean, this is butter. Oh. You see the juices in that thing is moist. Wow. I mean, this is perfect. Oh yeah. This is one of those briskets where you just know by slicing it that it's moist. There we go. Test. Beautiful. Alright guys, look, I know I say this on a lot of my uh, a lot of my cooks, a lot of my videos, but hey, this is one of the best briskets I've ever cooked. I love that uh, salt and pepper, that salt and pepper crust that it has. It's very, very it's moist as you can see. Test. Plenty of moist. That outer crust with that uh, salt and pepper is a uh, winner for sure. Oh, 
Oh man. <laughs> Let's get a close up in on this. I mean, wow. Guys, look, that's it for this one. This is how Jersey throws down, okay? Texas versus West Coast versus East Coast. All in good fun, of course. But when I do a uh, brisket like this, I'm proud to uh, throw my hat in the uh, ring with the big boys because uh, I'll tell you what, man, this thing is uh, moist as moist can be. Again, check out my uh, $25 off for crowdcow.com. At a last look, they did have some more of these briskets in stock. Okay, so you definitely want to give that a uh, give that a look. Look, I'm going to clean up this mess. Try to get me a good thumbnail. I'm going to enjoy this. Everybody have a, a good Fourth of July weekend. And until next time, ciao.